Hi everyone. So today I'm going to take up Liz Cheney's chart in some detail because as you may know she is um, she's due to be in a really big election next month, August 16th which is you know, basically when her political fate is going to be decided. I, I was under the impression a while back that it was the November midterms, but that's not how it works. She first needs to win her primary, and then if she does, she would go on to the general election in November, which would mean she would almost certainly win which, whoever wins the August 16th date is pretty much a shoe in because of the way Wyoming politics is. It's a red state and a Democrat there has little chance of winning. So her problem is winning August 16th. And when I looked at the transits for that date and the progressions, I noticed some really interesting things that are you know, very astrologically relevant, relevant, sorry, so I thought I would present them. And so here goes. So basically there's the date, August 16th, that shows the outer planet positions, but I'll go to here to show it a little more clearly. This is the time of the, of the primary. I have it for 8 p.m. in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, it may not be that city, it doesn't matter. The main point is these planet positions are all, are all accurate. And of course, the thing that is most telling in terms of her chances, and which I would consider very positive, is the Jupiter transit, because Jupiter happens to be in Aries, you can see it here, 8 degrees, 0, 06, but realize too that it's coming out of a station in late July. It's a very strong placement for Jupiter. So you put that over here in Aries and you immediately see that it's it's in, in trine to her uh, Sun and Mercury. Now it's not precisely trine, but it's the kind of thing where when you look at transits, you know this Jupiter is backtracking, will go back to really late Pisces in November, and then it'll go forward again and cross over these planets again. So effectively speaking, this planet is in trine. And this is typically the kind of aspect that you want if you're trying to win a contest, if you're trying to win anything, if you're trying to get a good result it automatically, in a sense, fixes all the problems, whatever other issues there may be in the chart at this time. And the thing is, when you look for, for problems, you find some things, but it's hard to say that what you find is all that problematic. Probably having Saturn in Aquarius at all in some sense is a bit dangerous because it opposes her sun sign, but the real issue with this opposition was last year when it was doing it directly and was probably the hardest time that she's had through this whole period, 2021. In the middle of 2021, she announced her intention to be part of a committee that would try to take Trump down and that made her very unpopular with her own colleagues, with the GOP across the country, with the Wyoming GOP and so forth. So that was with Saturn opposite really closely. Matter of fact, in the fall, Saturn was making stations opposing these planets. So it was, it was very intense. But now it's in later degrees. It's not making any aspect to anything in Leo. And if anything, there's a possibility. Well, you could count it toward the, the moon the moon is pretty far away, 
calling that a sextile is probably overreaching. So bottom line, the Saturn is not doing, uh, it's, it's not at, at a high intensity point the way it was last year. And then when you look for other uh, planets, you notice that Neptune is not doing too much. It's in Pisces, unless you want to count it over Chiron, that might have some meaning, possibly. Um, Uranus is at 18 degrees Taurus. This actually would be supportive since from 18 degrees Taurus, it sextiles Jupiter. So that's quite nice. Uh, Pluto transiting through the late degrees of Capricorn. No problem there. Again, if anything, a sextile in this direction to Chiron. Saturn is probably too far away, although it's late enough in Capricorn you'd be tempted to link it to a sextile to Saturn. It certainly already got almost that far in its last station. And Mars, you see over here at 28 Taurus, is sextile Saturn, or close to it. So there's very little going on here that you would say is a problem. If you look at the, the Sun, for example, in Leo, that's perfectly fine. There's no problem there. Uh, moving toward a trying to her moon. Uh, but then you even notice some interesting positive uh, quick transits, as in the Venus is close to the sun. It's at six degrees, 30 minutes, which at her age, when you do a precessional correction, you, you get these transits at that age where you notice important things tend to happen close to a degree later. So that actually fits where the Venus is. And then probably the most befuddling uh, transit for that day happens to be the fact that you see the moon really, really late in Aries, right? And so you put it there in super late Aries, and you notice that it means it's trining her moon at the time of when the election would probably be announced, you know, the winner, uh, 8 p.m. I'm not sure what it is in Wyoming, but it might be seven, it might be nine. It's, it's in that range. And you also know that this moon, I looked it up a while back and from 2 p.m. in Wyoming, you backtrack it, it would be uh, somewhere around 25 degrees, 20, actually 26 and some. 2643, which would be the last aspect that makes that day to Pluto, and thereafter it's void, of course. So, as the election is being counted, announced, etc., all of that is void, of course. Now, the first thing you know about void, of course, is that it has a way of going off on a tangent and producing unexpected results. Right? That's one of the things, for sure. But more to the point, the fact that as it's being announced, the moon is trining her moon. Here it's already past the minutes of her moon, but at 7 p.m. it would still be within range. One of the things about Void of Course that I'll tell you is that if you're looking at Void of Course moon periods, you look for the degrees you know, related to the planets on that day. And so strictly speaking, you'd say from 2 p.m., contacts this Pluto, after that, it's void. However, because she has her moon at 29 Sagittarius, for her personally, in a individualistic way, in an individual way, it's not void until after it crosses through 29, 24. So in that sense, the moon is still working for her. But all of that, as I understand it, would be very positive. Because again, it's a trine, it's a good aspect and supports the Jupiter, uh, you know, or, or aligns with a Jupiter trying to her sun, and the fact that lots of other things are working for her. And then if you say, well, all right, what about her progressions? Can we throw a little more light on this? Is there something else that can be shown? And there I turn to here, and this is her natal chart, six degrees, 52, Taurus rising. She was born super late that day, three minutes before midnight of the next day. Here are the progressed positions. 
and you start to see some interesting things right away because notice that her ascending degrees, nine degrees Cancer, are crossing over where her Venus is at birth. And you know, to keep this in perspective as to what it means, the ascendant is going to move maybe a degree a year, if that. So in other words, she's in this period and has been from last year and will still be in it next year. It, it, uh, an ascending, progressed ascendant, uh, uh, a progressed ascendant situation, a, a progression like this, it's not just like the traveling moon. You know, when I went back to here, the traveling moon that's super quick. I mean, we're talking about an instantaneous thing that happens that night. The progression of the ascendant is slower and it's an actual period that is being defined. And, you know, as I understand it, that's a very positive progression to have the progressed ascendant going over your Venus during this period of her life. Right? There's no doubt in my mind that that is so. Um, but then you also notice that as a counterpoint, potentially, where you would say, okay, well, strictly speaking, you have to consider it a problem to put the progressed sun over here. You put it in late Virgo and you notice that it therefore opposes Saturn and squares the moon. It's triggering, probably it is, it's the most difficult aspect in our chart, Saturn square moon. Although, you know, as an aside, this is a great example of a person who is taking a Saturn moon square, which if you're just reading cookbook astrology books, they'll say, oh, that's bad. You know, Saturn square moon, it makes, makes the person prone to depression and to, you know, uh, feeling all kinds of things that may not be savory and including all kinds of debacles in their life, blah, blah, blah. That's only true if the person doesn't have a good connection to that aspect, hasn't developed their Saturn, their moon to a place where they make it workable, at which point what you really say about this is that a Saturn moon square person is very ambitious and works really hard. Right? That's really, that's the bottom line. However, the progressed sun is very late in Virgo. It's opposing Saturn and it squares the moon. But then you can also backtrack and say, well, what about, what's the Saturn like? What's the Saturn like? Well, it does square the moon. That's definitely challenging. In this direction, though, you see that it makes a geometric trine to where Mercury and Sun are located because it would trine late Cancer and these degrees still get taken in. So this Saturn is not that bad. Right? It's workable in, in its relationship to the Sun. And so when the progressed Sun finds it in an opposition, it's not necessarily... Uh, a catastrophic situation. So that would be the counterpoint from the positive side, but I'm mentioning this as a aspect that, strictly speaking, would be challenging at this time. However, look at the progressed moon. And the progressed moon, you catch it here in Capricorn, to understand the progressed moon, it moves so that it'll cover a sign in progression about every two and a half years or so, is how long it stays in Capricorn. But isn't it interesting to see it basically right at the midheaven of the chart, 19 degrees at the time of the election, it's in there. Now, of course, she is in a very high profile position already as part of the January 6th committee. So that explains part of it. But nevertheless, this has to be considered a good aspect as well. If you're looking at the notion of is she going to win, is she going to lose? I would consider it uh, quite positive. Right? And then, you know, other aspects here are quite good as well. The, the progressed Venus, 1741 Virgo, if you put it there, it's in the region of these two planets. It's just leaving the Uranus right now. But from there, it's very close to making a sextile to her Jupiter, which is also a positive thing. And as an aside, the Venus going over Pluto Uranus, if you backtrack it to last year, it would have been over the Pluto. And this is a very good uh, reflection of 
what's been going on in her life because first of all Venus as, as a ruler of the natal ascendant is a very important planet in terms of taking action in terms of her self-image in terms of everything literally the, the ascendant ruler is super critical you put it over Pluto explains her extreme willfulness and her you know total in all in approach trying to take down Trump as I understand it because here's an example of of the idea that in part she's doing with the Plutonian impulses of someone else someone else's fascistic approach to the problem you know they want to become uh, you know king of the country the, the old fascist ruler but she's in a way deploying that energy against him through her willfulness you know through her approach to this and that's explained by Venus being there now it's already getting beyond the Uranus the Uranus would just be also a kind of very self-willed type of behavior during this period of her life but I would not consider this uh, Venus progression at all problematic because when it's going through these degrees what do you see you see sextiles toward Jupiter and sextiles toward Neptune there's no problem at all so this would be again uh, a positive thing so it, it's hard to see how she doesn't win and, I, and then if you go take a look at uh, if you go f further into this and look at her opponent unfortunately I have no time for her Harriet Hageman she may have the moon anywhere between 23 20 Sagittarius and 6 degrees Capricorn now start looking okay where are the transits you know I don't see a whole lot of positive here you Neptune and Pisces it's pretty good it trines Venus that's good that would be a, a definitely a, a positive aspect uh, but she does have Saturn transiting through Aquarius squaring that Venus and in fact around the election time it's pretty well uh, on it it's a little earlier by degrees but it's definitely hitting this Venus quite hard and since she's a Libra Venus becomes a very important planet and an aspect like this is definitely the kind of aspect you find in losses and setbacks and basically the big no when Saturn is like this Jupiter uh, transiting through Aries not particularly helpful because yes makes a sextile to Saturn but it's opposite her Sun sign doesn't do too much else and at uh, around the election time it's still you know in Aries uh, in the election time meeting in August not particularly helpful and what else is there in here Uranus and Taurus again Uranus there opposes the Neptune uh, doesn't do anything all that positive and then of course you see the Neptune here depending on where the moon ends up being to the extent that she's born early in the day or on the earlier side as in between midnight and 7 8 a.m what's going to happen is then this Neptune would be squaring her moon that would be another problematic aspect in terms of losing an election instead of winning it and so there's not a lot happening here that would you know but without the time of course but that would lead me to believe you know her path to victory is an easy path it simply isn't right? so now time will tell because in terms of the current polling uh, she's way ahead Hageman is way ahead by something like 20 points of course polls like that depending on who they're polling and so forth we've we've seen plenty of errors in the last few years so it's possible that something else is going on including that I can't get the story straight as to what's going on in Wyoming with the fact that Democrats are allowed to vote in the in the uh, primary and some say you have to register in order to do that and some say that you don't so I'm not sure exactly how that works but you would think that Liz would probably need an assist from Democrats in order to win since it looks like the you know, Republican primary voters are by and large enraged that her 
for um, you know exposing the orange menaces multiple crimes so that's uh, that's Liz the astrology for Liz but it's very interesting because of all the different points that um, that are in the transits and the progressions.